Alright guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Burp Spider to automatically crawl and map the website that you're trying to hack. Now, the first thing that I always like to do is I always make sure this use sweet scope defined in target lab is checked. This means that it's only going to spider whatever we define, and I showed you guys how to use target scope in the last video, pretty much prevents you from spidering the entire internet, which you probably don't want to do unless you are Google. So we're only going to spider the website that we're trying to attack, got that taken care of, and now before you just kick off your spider using this button, we need to change a couple options. And some of these options, they aren't really intuitive. And again, this is in spider options tab. So I just want to go over them real quick and they're going to give you a lot more control over exactly how you want to spider your target as well. So under the main crawler settings, this first one is check robots.txt. Now if you don't know what robots.txt is, whenever you make a website, you can add this file called robots.txt and it tells bots and mostly these are concerned with like um, search engine bots like Google's crawler. They tell those bots what pages they should and should not crawl. Now mostly whenever someone makes a robot.txt file, all the pages that it says to crawl are pretty obvious, the home page, the about page, the help page, whatever. Now even more interesting is what the website owner is telling the robot not to crawl. So under the disallow section, it usually has things like admin panels, sensitive documents, um, you know, all the good stuff. So if you ever go to a robots.txt file, look for disallow links and go to all those links because those are the good stuff. Now another thing is whenever like Google crawler sees these disallow pages, it doesn't crawl them. That's the point of it. However, our burp spider, the cool thing about this is it doesn't follow those rules. So it's going to look at all those links even there if they're in the disallow and it's going to crawl them anyways. Pretty cool, eh? All right. So now this detect custom not found. What is this? Whenever you make a website, you should return a 404 error and that means Whenever you go to a web page that doesn't exist, for example, login page exists, user new exists. What if I went to tunafish.php? Well, this is a not found, in other words, a 404 error. So what you can do is some people, instead of using the generic error page, see if I can go back to that. Instead of using this generic not found page, they make a custom one and that's what custom not found responses mean nothing exciting but there you go ignore links to non text content these are the links usually let me see if I can find one so these are usually links such as the ones in images right here any non text element such as you know like pings jpeg stuff like that stuff you really don't uh, care about crawling so that's what non-text content is and you usually want to keep this checked because don't crawl them because it just wastes time in your resources so you know what's the point another thing is request the root to all directories what this is going to do is it's automatically going to go to the root directory of every web page that it finds and there's a lot of good stuff in here especially if they don't have a default index.html page so it's going to make a default request even if there isn't a link to that directory. Make a non parameterized request to each dynamic page. Now, here's the thing a lot of pages, they take extra information in order to work. For example, if you're going to um, a social network profile page, it needs a user ID. There's not just a generic profile page, it needs the user ID as well user ID 4 user ID 28 so it needs this extra information in order to work if you say make a non parameterized request this means try to go to a web page whatever ones you find without any extra information why would we want to do that well sometimes when we do that and we make a request to these web pages they generate some weird kinds of bugs and these bugs are horrible whenever you're just you know a user and trying to experience the website but whenever you're looking for vulnerabilities these bugs can be really helpful so that's what it means go to a web page without using the default parameters now this maximum link depth and this maximum parameterized request per URL blah, blah, blah. this is pretty much the number of hops that 
the spider will take from the seed URL. So for example, whenever we find a link, then what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, I'm only going to hop this many hops from the seed. Why would we want to do that? Well, sometimes websites have dynamically generated content. In other words, when you click a link, it makes a new page. So if we just keep doing that and it keeps making new links and new pages, we're going to have an infinite loop. In other words, our spider is going to go on forever. So this prevents that in this maximum parameters request per URL. What this does is it says, okay, these are the limits in this case 50 that the spider can make to the same page using the given parameters. In other words, if you have a profile page and you have one link that says user equals one, then you have another link to the same profile page user equals two. Well, say we're trying to crawl Facebook, it's pretty much the same website structure, the same profile page, except we're gonna just get, you know, a billion users. Well, it's gonna be a waste of time. So that's what that does. Again, this and this prevent the spider from infinite crawling or never ending. Now, if you scroll down, we're gonna see passive spidering. What this does, pretty self-explanatory, it puts, like we saw before, whenever you go to a website manually, it takes all the links on all the forums and all the extra links like Facebook and Twitter and it pulls them out even though that we don't request them or go to those pages it pulls them out and logs them and again this is mostly for manual mapping whenever you want to pull out those extra links do you want to pull them out or not your choice now under form submission this first setting right here individual forms by all of these options this is how we tell burp if a form is new or not why would burp care about that? Well, sometimes the same form can be on every single page. So instead of just going and submitting it, for example, if they have like form-based navigation, which is kind of weird, but some websites have it, instead of um, submitting the same form on every single page you go to, then you could say, hey, we already tried this form, it's not new, and this is where you set that up, how to individuate forms, in other words, how to tell if it's new or not, now another thing that I like to check and I'm gonna recommend this is click don't submit forms so like I said whenever your automated spiders doing its thing it's not only gonna gather links to every page but it's gonna go on every single form and try to submit it now this can be handy in a lot of cases but whenever you're just spidering a website for the first time there's a lot of forms on most websites so I like to leave that unchecked. If you want, then what can happen if you click prop for guidance, then anytime it gets to one of these forms, a little pop-up is gonna appear and it's gonna say, okay, enter the data and then I can type in whatever I want. And then you click okay and it submits. However, like I said, for some websites, they have like thousands of forms. Unless you, you know, wanna waste an entire day typing stuff into forms, you probably don't wanna do that. Now this, right here is actually pretty handy. Whenever you click this, you can give it default values. And then whenever it comes across a form, it can say, you know what, I'm just going to use these default values and then I'm going to submit the form. So right now I'm just going to hit don't submit any forms, but usually you either want to use default data or just submit the forms whenever you're manually mapping the website. But I'm going to leave that, like I said, don't submit forms for right now. Now for application login, the reason that this is separate from your main form submission is because sometimes you want your spider to handle the login forms differently than the other forms. So again, you can either choose to not submit prompt for guidance or just give a default username and password. But I'm just gonna say prompt for guidance right now. Might as well just type in our login information manually. Now for the spider engine, it's usually best to keep the default settings for the best performance. One other thing you may be wondering is, all right, why am I pausing between requests? Well, sometimes you want to pause so you don't bog down the server. If you're just making a bunch of requests with no time in between, then your server is just going to crash whatever website you're trying to hack. It's just going to be too much data to process. So you usually want to wait a little bit. Also, you can choose to add random variations to your throttle or to throttle and what this does is it adds a random amount of time in between requests so one way that web pages detect if a site is being automatically crawled is saying okay if this user is requesting a new web page 
every you know so often then they're probably not a real user they're probably some kind of bot so what this at random variations does is it just makes your spider a little harder to detect it makes it look like it's looks more like a human rather than a computer program and these of course your request headers are just the headers that get sent whenever you make a request so if you don't know what headers are real quick whenever you request a web page from a server you send it extra information what type of request you're making what um, web page you're trying to access and a bunch of other information as well so that's what that is and now that everything looks pretty good actually I'm not I'm gonna click don't submit login forms right now alright looks pretty good so now we can hop back over to control and now that we have a little bit more control over exactly how we want our spider to behave and crawl the website we can just click this button and it's gonna start running so it's gonna say okay these are all the requests that I'm making how awesome Ugh. got like a hair in my throat awesome so in the blink of an eye by the time I chuffed up some hair it made 1329 requests alright pretty sweet let's hop back over to target and we now have a crap load of information how sweet is that the entire sitemap built in a blink of an eye so hmm, this directory looks pretty good evil find out what that is later on but there you go that is how you hand handle automated spidering using the burp spider well all of the settings being and also if you want how you can choose between mapping a website manually or automatically so thank you guys for watching see you next lesson